Hey, 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 time for another out of this world story from our space. Me, 16 male, found out my mom, 43 female, had been cheating on my dad, 43 male. Told my dad and took my dad's side. Mom is a wreck. So yeah, long story short, called my mom after I was at a friend's house. I was supposed to stay the night, but came home because I forgot something. Dad was working on New Year's, and mom was kissing a guy on the couch who I knew he was a colleague of mom's. I never was the angry type, but I remember just yelling at her and even threw the damn wine bottle she had on the table into the wall and called her all kinds of things. The colleague who I had known since I was a kid tried to calm me down, but I just ran into my room, locked the door, and called Dad. Dad called my uncle, his big brother, and he came and picked me up and stayed with him until Dad came back. He sometimes asked to travel for a couple of days, maybe once or twice every year. I still have not really talked with my mom. I just get so angry when I see her, and honestly, after the crap I called her, I think she's afraid to even speak to me. Mom just seems like a wreck, and Dad is considering divorce, but Dad has agreed to counseling first. I am seeing a shrink before anyone asks, but after going there for almost six months now, I still just go home angry and just feel so angry every time I see Mom. It's easier to pretend she does not exist at all. Like I said, we hardly talk anymore, and I'm afraid of saying something even more stupid if I have the conversation. Christmas this year, I quickly finished dinner, had no interest in presents or any of that Christmas stuff. Dad asked me to try to have regular Christmas, and I was try, but sitting at the dinner table with our family pissed with my uncle putting his hand on my shoulder once in a while to just calm me down. He must have seen how pissed I was and realized I could explode at any moment, but I remained polite and thanked my grandparents for the presents, but I just said I was tired and went to my room early. I just felt so fate to be sitting there having a normal Christmas with the rest of the family present. The only person who realized just how I felt was my uncle. I don't know what to do. Sick of being angry all the time. First reaction from a meminator. Look, when a person cheats, they are directly attacking the foundation of the family unit. This goes for men as well as women. She hurt both your dad and you with her actions and she needs to understand that. Maybe you can forgive your mother, but really it's on you. And it should be because you worked through those very justified feelings of betrayal, not because of any outside pressure. Good luck. Next thought from Rando Boomer. It's okay that you're feeling angry all the time. A lot of young people have trouble just hearing it at a conceptual level. You were there. It's great that you have an uncle who is there for you to help you deal with everything. That others aren't able to help as much as not necessarily as an indictment of them, so much as it is that they are going to their own stuff as well. Sometimes young people forget their parents aren't as good together as they seem. The important thing is that you do have someone, and you are getting professional help too. Dealing with something like this takes time, and you're on the right path. This might also be a good time to try to find a new interest, something that can engage you enough that you can escape some of this stuff for a little while. As the saying goes, when you're going through hell, don't stop. Good luck to you and your dad. On to the next story. Lied to years, probably. I get to the point, and I'll try to make it quick. Girlfriend of four years ended the relationship again. Fourth or fifth time, I lost count. On New Year's Day, I got horrible and useless for days and had multiple sleepless nights. Two days ago, she returns the laptop I gave her on January 2020. I've always suspected lies from her but never have gotten an answer. Come to find out while digging on my laptop that she forgot to log off of Instagram and Facebook amongst other websites. I'll preface by saying that I know it's morally wrong to go through people's social media accounts, but that shame and guilt went away the second I found the truth. On Instagram, there are multiple conversations with men spanning months, maybe years, with kiss emojis and other flirtatious conversations among lingerie pictures, which I've never received from her. On Facebook is where I found the juicy stuff. Again, multiple IMs with men spanning months, maybe years, but this time containing nude exchanges plus several fully nude masturbation videos from her to them. I took the evidence, which is conveniently time-stamped, and sent it to her. She wanted to remain friends and grab blah blah blah. I told her to F off. I also sent the evidence to her sister so she doesn't gaslight me and also to cause some trouble at home. On one hand, I'm glad it's finally over, but on the other hand, I'm mad at myself for not knowing sooner. Although I don't have evidence that she screwed other men, and even if she didn't, I want nothing to do with lies and deceit anymore. I'll take this post down if it doesn't fit the sub. Thanks for reading. First reaction from Red Rain 007. Dude, things happen for a reason in our life. That was a good sign to start a new life at New Year's Eve. Perfect. It was fate. Good luck moving on. Next reaction from I've Done the Work. 
So, how exactly is it morally or otherwise wrong to look into your own laptop and find what you fully expected to find? The reason why she repeatedly broke up with you. Privacy is never the same as secrecy. And if you lay her so-called privacy issues beside her betrayal, which one is morally, ethically, etc. more wrong? With infidelity and believing piracy and secrecy are equal, you are shorting yourself, making it nearly impossible to find the truth. You are going into a fist fight with one arm tied behind your back and going up against a professional fighter. You don't stand a chance. Even law enforcement uses the concept of a need to know. In a relationship, a need as well as a right to know trumps privacy considerations. In law enforcement, then let a prosecutor and a judge make the final decisions if it is necessary to look. You don't have case law slowing you down. Next thought coming from abbreviations FAR 7867. Sound like he learned a lesson that was sorely needed. Never put complete trust in any human. They will always let you down if you do. The OP comes back. Wish it had happened sooner. To which abbreviations FAR 7867 replies, Man, we all wish we had learned some of life's lessons sooner than we actually did. That is just the nature of things. Or, at least it was when I was younger. On to the next story. My wife left after Thanksgiving, claiming that I've neglected her, and I continuously re-traumatize her every time we have sex. She says she's working on caring for herself and self-improvement. However, there's another man involved. Need support. She left the day after Thanksgiving, in a van she bought with Tiana and Tennessee. She bought this van the same day she left, while I was at work. She came in saying she was overwhelmed and that she was going to leave. I got her to calm down and talk to me. In this panic, she said she didn't want to do this anymore. Tried to give the ring back, told me to sleep with other people. That's a whole lot of red flies I just ignored, and she left with a ring on her finger. She came back once a few days later for her first shower and laundry, but never since. She thought she might come use the Wi-Fi for her work-from-home days, but never happened. Fast forward a few weeks of me dissociating my existence, working the post office for 15 hours a day. It's Christmas and I'm new. I'm not eating, not sleeping. She comes around and says, I'm going to Florida. She respected my boundary of waiting for me to be home before she came back, but grabbed a bunch of crap and left. Her nails were pink. She drove the van to Lakeland, Florida. She said she picked up a friend. Wouldn't tell me who. Said I needed to stop calling around to her friends and therapist. I was breaking trust and boundaries. I don't feel that way. She's been diagnosed bipolar, on new brain drugs, drinking alcohol, and freaking left. I'm calling around trying to figure out what the hell. Anyways, she calls me a few times in Florida. Make sure I'm okay. Sends pics of alligators. She comes back four days later or something. Stops by the house while I'm gone. Calls me searching for her vibrator. She's only ever wanted to use it during sex, but okay. Maybe this is part of her self-improvement deal, whatever. She was in a real frenzy on the phone looking for it. Then, she doesn't come by for weeks. Not for me, not for the cats. She texts me and says, I miss the cats. I try to keep conversation texts going. I miss her. It's hard. She won't reply, I love you, or I miss you back. December 24th. I come home from work. She's on the couch crying. I try to act normal. I let the dog out. I come back and I sit with her. She's only interested in the cats. I ask if she's okay and she says, Was until I saw the cats. I started a conversation that day about feelings and felt good about it. Made plans for Christmas morning with her. December 25th. She comes over. I made cookies, muffins, and her breakfast of choice. We watched a movie together. We cuddled. We fall asleep together. Long hug before she left. A real kiss on the lips. She went to Tiana's Christmas party. December 26. She blew me off. Went fishing. With a mutual friend. I spent the day like D-Day Part 2. Walls closing in. I hopped on her Facebook. I snooped. Messages. It all. She went fishing with someone 10 years older and his kids. I souped more. He went to Lakeland, Florida. Pictures of his daughter painting his nails pink. He was looking to buy a van. Messages from him to her. Notifications turned off. All deleted. 27th. I worked. I told her we had to talk. I was going crazy. I called her best friend, whom said to change the locks because I wasn't being treated right. I brought up the name of this person, who was a mutual friend. She played dumb, but I know she knows. My wife goes to best friend's house before meeting me. Comes in. Gives me the ring. Says I've broken trust, and she doesn't want to work on anything. I bring up this dude's name. That's just where my van is parked. There's nobody else. She leaves. I snooped more. She went to his family Christmas party. She's cuddled with him and his kids in the back of the photos and videos. 
I distanced myself from my wife entirely. Now she's texting and calling to make sure I'm still alive. December 31st. She visits family and stays until January 3rd. I've been 100% transparent about all information with her mom since D-Day. My wife shortened her trip significantly, probably because she wasn't planning on not having a ring. She tells her mom it's because of her assault years prior, and I re-traumatize her every time we have sex, and she's not okay to be with anybody after the abuse she suffered years ago, and she's working on herself. She tells me she told her mom about the assault, asks if I'm okay. I say no. She calls. I blew up. My feelings, boundaries, telling her if it's going to work, I need the truth. I'm tired of being gaslit and out to dry. Friends turning against me at every turn. She cried. A lot. She said she loves me that she'd like to see me. I check messenger, unread message from him. I read it. He misses her. Called her babe. I screenshot and deleted it. So I see her that night after her return drive home. I see the van. She's definitely living in it. She's also not okay. She told me about this trauma she's re-experiencing. I believe it. I think it's truth. We talk. I hold my cards on this guy to myself. We hugged, go our ways. After talking to me, she deleted it all. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, all of it. That's how it's been for the last few days. Her mom stopped calling me. I wonder what was really said to her. All of this. I know my wife is not okay. She's not herself. She's in crisis. She won't let me in, won't let me help. I don't know how to bring up this other man again without pushing her further. But I fear she's already gone.